So the S23 Ultra has been out for just about five months. I think, honestly, today of me shooting this, the 17th, has been out for exactly five months. So I wanted to give just a quick follow-up. It's about, I would say, in the middle of its life cycle before we start to see, you know, a bunch of rumors and a bunch of hype coming for the S24. I know that there's other, you know, phones on the horizon and things like that, but Samsung tends to kind of end up falling to the back. Um, when newer devices start coming out and a lot of the times and myself included we're guilty of not revisiting these devices to let y'all know how they're aging how they're holding up so that's what we're going to do today today is all about s23 ultra five months later <music> So the way that we're going to tackle this is we're going to look at four categories. We're going to look at hardware, software, battery, and then we're going to close out with the camera. So to go ahead and kick things off, let's go ahead and talk hardware. And to be 100% honest, I'm not going to have too much to really cover in terms of hardware. Here, I'll actually take off the case if you're curious as to what I'm rocking. It's the Kadabi Sheath through and through. Check out the video. I'll leave a little button in the top right there so y'all can check out the video on that if you're interested. Uh, super dope case. Honestly, my favorite S23 Ultra case in all honesty. But looking at the actual hardware of the device itself, there's honestly not a whole lot that Samsung needed to change. The S22 Ultra's design was borderline perfect, in my opinion. It's really minimalistic in this black colorway. You know, it, it's really stealthy. It's really sleek. I absolutely love it. Um, the only changes that I want to say that they really made when it came to S22 moving to the S23 was the side profile is actually flat. So if you look at it from the top there, you can see that that side profile is, I'm trying to get that to focus, but you can see that the side profile, it's flat versus rounded, which I called that out with our, um, with our uh, initial review of the S23 Ultra. Um, excuse me, I got to silence that phone call. Uh, but yeah, I called that out with the S23 Ultra kind of first impressions and all of that good stuff. The other change is just kind of the lining on the camera housing there. You'll see some of the cameras, like the main three here. You'll actually see that they have kind of like a ring to match whatever color device that you have. So that was honestly the two biggest changes from a hardware perspective. Everything else for the most part is exactly the same as the S22 Ultra. Like I said, I think that the S23 Ultra is one of the best in smartphones currently. Super sleek, super minimal. I can't really give any, you know, quirks or qualms or I don't have any issues with it. It's just understated and it's dope. And I'll kind of leave it at that. So let's go ahead and move right along and talk about the software experience, because that's where I kind of noticed quite a significant of a jump. So let me throw the case back on. So the first in terms of software that, that, that I'll kind of call out is, you know, in terms of like feature set in one UI, you know, working the way that it's intended, all that stuff is exactly the same. So, you know, things like your edge panels, you know, your uh, vertical scrolling app drawer that a lot of people don't like. <laughs> it doesn't bother me, but a lot of people don't like that. Um, but yeah, like just the way that one UI works and flows is exactly the same as the S22 Ultra. Where you're going to see the biggest change is going to be in the software fluidity department, the software performance. Um, Samsung software performance, and we kind of started to see them make some changes with like the Z Fold 4, honestly had never really been the best. Um, you would have like mid-range or budget devices performing better than $1,200 flagships, which is just un unacceptable in my opinion, right? Well, that's honestly changed through and through with the S23 Ultra. Um, I said it for the Fold 4 video, and I kind of talked about it in my review for the S23 Ultra, but this is the smoothest I've ever used One UI. This is the absolute, you know, smoothest, most butter. It, it's literally just pretty much perfection. Um, there still may be a few things here and there that kind of need to be ironed out that don't always look the best, but if this is kind of like where they're going, I'm 100% on board. Because like I said, everything from just opening apps, closing apps out, it, it's absolutely buttery smooth and you know the one area that I do still see that they need to work on I'll see if I can kind of get it to demonstrate here is actually the Google Discover page well that's obviously going to be fluid now but like with most of the time whenever you're scrolling to your Google Discover page shout out to the Jujitsu Kaisen season two right there um, for all my anime lovers 
But anyway, um, when you're scrolling over, you'll kind of see that it'll kind of like hiccup going to the Google Discover page when you haven't done it in a while. I'll try to see if I can demonstrate that here on video. But like I said, that that's just one example of kind of still like the little things that they need to kind of iron out and work through. Um, and in all honesty, if, if that's the only thing that I can really comment to, it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, everything on this device is buttery smooth. Like I haven't had any, oh, almost went in text messages. Um, haven't had any issues or anything like that, man. Absolutely love how smooth the Galaxy S23 Ultra is. Like it is on another level. Like with this type of performance, I no longer am gonna make the call out about Samsung having bad performance. I'm, I just see no need to really do that. Um, the three things, well, four really, that I had an issue with the S22 Ultra with, one was the thermals, one was the animations, another was the um, shutter delay in the camera, and there was one more, but I don't remember what it is off the top. So we'll, we'll kind of just go with those three. Um, animations, Samsung took care of that, no problem whatsoever. Um, I can go ahead and talk a little bit about performance, because like I said, I don't really have a section for it. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that's in the S23 Ultra, literally made all the difference and that's why you know you have a lot of people saying well a lot of people didn't think the jump from s22 ultra to s23 ultra was going to be significant and in my opinion it's not it, it's not a significant jump it's just what they did change made all the difference in the things that we had issues with because think about it what was the issues we had with the s22 ultra thermals and we had issues with battery for the most part like though in, in, in animation. So thermals, battery, animation, like those were the big things, right? And I kind of remember the fourth one. So it was animations, battery, thermals, and shutter delay was like my main issues. But anyway, so those three were kind of like the main things from a performance standpoint. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, you know, fixed all three of those. The phone is like, this is the coolest running phone that I own. Um, and that says something, especially coming from, you know, the Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, which is a phone that's known to kind of go ahead and warm up. It doesn't overheat. I'm not getting error messages and heating messages, but it does run hot quite a bit. So coming from that device to this device, this device is cool as a cucumber at pretty much all times, whether I'm out in bright sunlight, out at the Disney theme parks with the sun beaming on me, um, whether I'm in you know the hot car waiting for the AC to kick in, whatever. This device runs cool as a cucumber, man. Cool as a cucumber. So that's definitely shout out to Qualcomm for their work on the 8 Gen 2. Um, the other thing was the battery life, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then, like I said, the animations were taken care of. Samsung, great job in that regard, too. So let's go ahead and actually move on and talk battery life, right? So battery life is, is kind of weird for me. Um, it's not that it's not good or I'm not getting good battery life. I'm getting through a day easily with battery left in the tank. Um, but I'm not seeing the same, like, I'm getting 10 hours, I'm getting 11 hours, I'm getting nine and a half. Like I'm not seeing that type of battery life, but I, I am seeing like really good, like seven and a half, eight, eight and a half hours of screen on time. I think the highest I can generally get is nine hours. And don't get me wrong, I don't take screen on time as like the end all be all when it comes to dealing with battery life on a smartphone. Uh, because me specifically, I do things like run wireless Android Auto. The screen's turned off, but I'm using GPS maps and Spotify. Um, I listen to YouTube videos as like audio podcasts. The screen is off. If I'm listening to Spotify for my morning walks, I have the screen turned off. So those things aren't being calculated in the screen on time, but it is draining my battery. So like I said, I, I don't take screen on time as like the end all be all metric, but just to give you guys kind of an estimate of what I'm seeing. So I would say between seven hours and eight and a half on the high end, I'm, I, I can get nine. Um, but in terms of like how it lasts me throughout the day, I can take the phone off the charger at eight or nine and won't have to look at a charger for the rest of that day for the most part. And I think that that's really saying something. Now, obviously, when I wake up the next morning, I have to charge and I'm at, you know, 20 to 15 percent. But just the fact that I can take it off the charger at eight or nine and not have to look at a charger until, you know, going into the next morning is fantastic. Like, honestly, this is probably the best battery life that I've ever tested on Android. And that's really saying something. So Samsung, whatever y'all are doing in terms of the battery department, you know, keep up the good work. We're hearing rumors of, of them going to like a stack battery technology. That's gonna be dope. So shout out to y'all for, for for doing the do with that and pulling off some, some, some major 180s because the S22 Ultra, man, that battery life was trash. The thermals were trash. Like 
honestly had more problems with that phone thermally and battery wise than I have on my Pixel 7 Pro. So, like I said, definitely saying something that they could kind of pull a 180 and give us what we got with the S23 Ultra. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to kind of the final category, which is cameras, 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 cameras. And I have a love hate relationship with these cameras, man. And I'm just going to go ahead. And yeah, I was listening to my Walking on the Dream. Love that song. And so does my little one. Um, so anyway, I have a love hate relationship with these cameras, man. And and what it comes down to, and it's it's not the shutter, because with the latest recent update, and I'll kind of try to see if I can demonstrate here on camera for y'all. Um, when you have the proper settings selected, the shutter is really fast. Like, look at how fast that's shooting pictures. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the, oh, I actually have that playing. My bad, y'all. Got these headphones on, I couldn't even tell. I'll see if I can, oh my goodness, I can't mute it. All right, there we go. I'll go back in and kind of mute that out or whatever. But either way, um, yeah, so as you can see, snapping photos super super fast now i know a lot of people are like oh well you're using camera assistant with a quick tap and all that other good stuff let me show you all my camera assistant settings so here's my camera assistant settings as you can see quick tap shutter is turned off and then for my capture speed i have it on balance balance speed and quality so it's not all on prioritized speed i'll take it back to the camera and i'll go in and i'll shoot some more pics oh if i could get my finger less and you can see how fast that's taking pictures. Now, even though I would say that that fixes the shutter, um, what I'm noticing is that while it's taking pictures faster, it's not necessarily still taking care of like fast moving objects. And, and it's not in all lighting situations. And that's what I try to stress. I'm not seeing like shutter motion blur issues when I'm in peak bright light outside. Like that's not where I typically have the issue. It's indoor dimmer lighting is where I see the issue. And in those areas, I'm still seeing the you know same exact issues with this particular camera. So that 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 that's what I'm saying. I have a love hate relationship with it. Um, the only other callouts I can really make about the camera one is the processing in terms of like their landscape colors. I don't know why, but Samsung loves their reds and they love their greens. They boost those colors to crazy levels for some reason. Like I prefer the more natural approach. Again, that's going to be subjective. Some people might prefer the, the more boosted colors. I, I just don't like the extra brightness and boosted colors. Keep it a little contrasty with some natural colors, and that's kind of my jam. Um, the other call out is with the telephoto uh, lenses. So I actually flipped this over. The two telephoto lenses in, in this camera, they're, the sensors for them just aren't big enough. And I've talked about this in previous videos. Like Samsung, we need bigger sensors in these telephoto cameras. That way we can use them in all lighting situations, whether it's, you know, dimmer lighting, whatever, we should still be able to use these two telephoto lenses and actually optically crop in, not do like a digital crop on the main camera or anything like that. Give us bigger senses on the telephoto lenses. Supposedly we were originally getting a, you know, one telephoto lens that was going to be like variable on the S24. Rumors have kind of, you know, shot down that for the most part saying that it's not quite ready which you know it is what it is if the tech isn't ready it isn't ready um but that's kind of what i'm hoping for give us one telephoto that's a variable aperture throw a big sensor so we can use it in pretty much every situation because that's kind of what the difference is between you know samsung's telephotos and telephotos from other manufacturers they usually use bigger sensors so you can use them in more lighting situations so that would really be the only call out to have on the camera, man. Like overall, it's still a dope package and it's not a deal breaker. Any of the things that I mentioned in terms of the cameras, overall, Samsung was able to throw together, and this is kind of like just our closing thoughts, they were able to put together something truly fantastic. Like if you're one, and I'm generally not, if you're one who talks about, you know, smartphone of the year and best smartphone of the year and all of this stuff, this phone has to be in that conversation. Like it has to be in that conversation. Is it winning that conversation? I think it just depends on what type of user you are. Um, there are things that this device is better suited for and things that other devices are better suited for. But if you're gonna make the, the argument that one phone should be like smartphone king of the year or whatever, this has to be in that conversation. And I always say it, but the best praise that we as tech reviewers can give is this is a phone that remains in my rotation. It isn't one that's just, you know, sat on the desk and collected dust or sat in a drawer like some of my other devices. 
I rotate this device out with my Pixel 7 Pro kind of regularly. I would say at least once every couple of weeks. I enjoy using this phone, and in my opinion, this is the absolute best phone that Samsung's put out by a long shot, by a long shot. Is it perfect? No, but no smartphone is. And I would say this is probably one of the closest phones to perfect that you can actually get. So that's kind of my follow up on, you know, the S23 Ultra. Samsung, you dropped an absolute banger. Keep up the great work. That's where we're going to close out this one, though. So as always, this is Ike's Tech Talk. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.